Alrighty, welcome to tomorrow. So here we are today, as it's now called. Um, I'm just going to open up these holes on top to make sure the stones are all sitting in correctly. Pave set, yeah, the stones have got to go, they can't be on top of the metal, they've got to kind of go in, so make sure they're right at the girdle on the surface at least, uh, and then nicely spaced out as well, make sure there's enough space for them. This kind of thing, setters seem to be really good at it, like they'll just go straight to the correct ball phrase, um, like the same size as the stones, and then just go and then just go around it and everything's perfect. Uh, the setting videos I've seen on YouTube, like quite amazing the skill level, some setters. Uh, I'm not that good at it, so I tend to, I've got a small, small one selected there. So I'm gonna go around it, um, getting the spacing correct with a small one, and then I'll open them up with that one, which is about the same size, it's just under the same size as those. My first two, yeah, do you remember I marked top and bottom? Those ones I'm happy are really accurate, accurate. So, do those first. And I've got my line I did with the divider going around it, so that's not my middle section. Oh my god, I've gone wrong straight away. Uh, so yeah, so I've got a few few indicators of accuracy. Already I feel like I'm not going to do a very good job at this. Let's do the bottom one as well. And the accuracy of all the others basically was done with these two as a guide. So let's just get these two done first. So just like I drilled it out, I'm going to do sort of every other one. Again, this is just how I work to get the sort of best out of myself. Some people don't need to do this, they'll just get the go straight to the ball phrase they need for the stones and just go around it <laughs> and mark it all out really well. I can't do that. Perhaps I've been around it quickly with the smaller one. Let's open it up with a, this bigger one now. My little holes are drilled. Remember, I was going in at that angle, so they're not going to look central to, to these. If I was accurate, they should look sort of towards the centre collet. Next step, I think I want to open up the back holes and make those look good, and then also that will help the stones drop right in. There's still a lot of metal around the inside. The stones are not... It's like the diameter, the diameter is about correct for the stones, but they're not quite dropping down enough, so I want to take some of that metal away. So what I'm going to do is get a... Working from the back now, I'm just going to get a bigger drill and open them up from the back. You could do it with another ball phrase, but I'm just going to... I think a drill might work quicker. How big? So I've got a ball phrase that's uh, it's not quite as big as that, but it's a bit bigger than the drill holes. The drill actually caught the edge of a few of them where it opened them up, so I'm going to go around it again with this one, slightly bigger than these, and then neaten it up a little bit more, and then it should be ready to move on. Just to get these holes really central, I just found this flame phrase. These are really good for this kind of work. Uh, I need to buy some of these. This is the only one I've got, and it's a bit worn out. I need to go on a course to learn how to do this nicely. Not my best work. Maybe if I move it around like that, you won't you won't see what I did too badly. <laughs> okay, so coming up next, do the gallery wire. Don't look at my work. I'm tempted to I've done all this work leading up to this point. I'm tempted to do a like proper one with like little pips, a bit of a gap there. But I don't know. I don't want it to be easy for people who are new to doing this. Yeah, let's keep it easy. Let's keep it easy here. So, just flatten that up. So this is the easiest example of putting a gallery, gallery wire on the back of something. Uh, we're going to use square wire. Uh, the flat of the square is perfectly straight. It's going against a straight back pendant. It's very easy, really, just making a ring the right size. So I didn't want my gallery wire going over the edge of my holes yet. This bit of wire is a little bit thick. So I'm gonna mill this down a little bit. If you haven't got a square draw plate, square hold draw plate, don't worry about it, nor have I. I'll put a link on the screen to uh, show you a video I made previously uh, explaining how I make my square wire. So I'm just gonna mill it down a little bit and then I'll be using this. Alrighty, so this is quite straightforward. 
got my bit of square wire, basically just making a ring the same size as that circumference, so it sits in there. But got to be really exact with the size of it. It's got the edge, the edges have got to fit really perfectly in line, because we're going to be buffing around it. So I want it a nice, I want this, what the, the look I want is uh, straight down for that setting edge, straight down with that setting edge, and then this angle down, and then this straight again. I'm just going to guess it. We've all heard stories of these master old craftsmen that can just look at a piece and then turn up a gallery wire and it fits perfect. Let's have a go. I am no master jeweler. That's not even circle. Come on, Chris, sort it out. I'll tell you what, I'm not having a very skillful day today. Dropping things. Phrasing holes out badly. It goes like that sometimes. Okay, that looks too small. Is he a master? Oh, no, he's not quite a master yet. Time to do. Let's see if that goes to the end of my stick. Okay, just do this. I'll make it a bit big, chop it through, and then just cut it down with a couple of saw cuts through the join, and then it should line up nicely. So that's kind of the right size now. It's not quite round. I think by the time I put a little saw cut through that to make that join nice, and then make it round, it's going to be just about right on the on the pendant. I soldered it up. I pushed it on the end of my ring stick to sort of get the shape good. Um, to get it really perfect, just gave it a very gentle tap in that. So it's about, to be honest, it's just a tiny, tiny little bit smaller than I would have liked because I'd like to have a bit of metal there to sort of buff it back, but it is basically the correct size. But I've just kind of, I wish it was the amount that comes off when you buff it bigger, <laughs> which is like barely anything. Anyway, it's going to work. I'm really tempted to do this properly with a little gap there. Ah, I want to. But I'm not going to. Let's save that for another video. We'll do something... We'll do this one now, because this is like the easiest entry-level version. And next one, we'll do a bit more of a complicated design pendant, and then we'll do a proper gallery wire with little pips and holding it away, I think. We'll save it for another video to make it more advanced. So it's probably best, I think, we do this one as easy as possible. So this one's just going literally, just plonking it on there. And what it does, gives it the piece more strength, uh, makes it look a bit deeper there. So it makes it look a bit more substantial. And I think it just makes it look nicer, just all around having that extra kind of edge looking around the back as well. It just makes it a, a nicer, a nicer piece. What I would do is if this was like platinum or gold, I would certainly buff that before it goes on. I would probably polish that inside edge. You can get to it quite easily. If you're lucky, your felt, finger felt will go on the end. If not, you might have to do it with bristle brushes or something. But yeah, get that inner edge polished nicely, get the back polished really well, then solder them together and it should look really nice. So next step, I've already buffed that. Uh, I'm gonna do it now with my perfectly made buff stick from a previous video. I'll put a link on the screen to it now if you want to see how I made this buff stick. But the chances are, if you're a jeweler with enough experience to be having a go at making this, you're probably already okay with making buff sticks. Tweezers and spring tweezers holding my tweezers with a toggle on holding that. Little, little invention there going on on the bench. Just touching a little bit of solder on there. Hopefully I can get that to go in. All right, that just tacked on. So I put it in the acid for a bit. Um, I've just put it on my metal block. I gave it a little tap, top and bottom. So that's holding in position now, so I don't really need my tweezers on it anymore. So I will just go around it, adding little bits of solder, making sure it floods nicely. 
and and then that's it. And then just double checking inside that it's all flooded through correctly at every, every point all the way around. So I have been busy adding solder around the outside and then trying to get it to flood. Just filed it back a little bit so there's a couple of little blobs went either side. Uh, checking inside, making sure you've got this nice sort of beaded, beaded edge of solder in there. Should be all nice and neat. And yeah, I'm just going to work around the outside now and uh, just get it nice and nice and flat. So where I was mentioning earlier about you've got to be super accurate with these wires. Like if it had gone over the edge a little bit, when I file it back, it's going to look thin to try and get to get get this edge perfectly smooth and flat. This would go thin because it was sticking out a little bit. Then also if it was the other way, if it had gone in from the edge, I'd then be taking away the sort of top corners of my of my piece, where which is obviously really bad for the shape of that. So yeah, you really got to be accurate. And then doing this one was very easy. It gets very difficult, especially with square wire, uh, to follow double curvatures. It takes a lot and a lot of um, tweaking and adjustments to get it perfect. So I am carefully going around it with a file, making sure I'm filing it nice and flat. Even even a, if you've got a needle file. It's quite good because they're very sensitive to how they feel. You can be really accurate with your angles and stuff. Might actually be a better tool than the bigger one. And uh, yeah, keep an eye on your edge. Should, everything should just be nice and parallel and nice and nice and flat as you go around it. And then hopefully, once you've filed around it, you haven't got any little dips or anything on your solder join, and you can paper it, and it should be sort of finished, ready for a ring to be put on. To get inside that edge, yeah, cut down one of these paper discs, probably a bit too small, might do another one. Uh, and that goes in there nicely, I can just spin that round, just get in there. This is really coarse, but maybe a, a finer grade one would be nicer for getting it polished or rubber wheels if you can get rubber wheel in there it's probably a better tool than this maybe considering you want it to be finished off nice and polished before setting i'd have all this polished out inside as well because people can turn it around and look inside it i know there's going to be a stone there but the stone will look its best if it's polished out and just any little edges that people can see from the back. Just a sign of a higher quality piece when it's hand finished and all polished out nicely. With simplicity in mind for making this pendant as the whole thing has been about doing the gallery wire as easy as possible. So let's do the, the hanging loop as easy as possible. So it's basically just a jump ring, yeah? Um, think ahead a little bit. This is going to have stones in and someone's going to pay a lot of money for it if you're finishing a piece of jewellery. So it's got to be strong. Have something a little bit uh, a little bit strong looking rather than something a bit weedy. Because uh, you know on a chain moving about it's going to get wear so you want it to last a long time. You don't want it to just break even after one year, two years. It's way too soon. If someone's paid a lot of money for something they're going to be really unhappy. It's got to be like a 10 year lasting thing. Have that in mind. Um, so yeah, make it a small ring, just big enough for a chain to go through. I've got a chain in mind somewhere, uh, like a trace chain. Like di I like diamond cut trace chains. I think they're very strong. They're sort of faceted, so they sparkle a lot. They're really good on pendants like this. So I'm going to get a, one of those chains, make sure my jump ring is sort of big enough for that to go through, and then we'll put it on. I'll show you how I put them on. Okay, I've selected this bit of wire and it is, where's my thing? It is one mil, exactly. So if this was gold, yeah, I'd be getting this nicely finished. I would get a little bit of paper, just while it's still straight. Perhaps hold it in pliers. Just paper the outside. I would run that across the polishing mops. Just drr, drr, make sure there's no scratches on that wire before I turn it up into a ring. And that way you know it's really nice, especially in platinum. Um, it's nice to have a really nicely polished ring. Even though it's really small, it's got to be polished on the inside if you're making a high quality piece. 
So this bit of chain, I found this in my box. This was from my video where I made that length adjustable chain. I'll put a link up on the screen for that if you're interested and to see how I did that. Uh, so I want to use this chain again. This is what I meant by diamond cut trace chain. If you loop that, you can see it's got kind of facets on. There's a lot of straight, perfectly cut angles and that's what gives it a lot of sparkle. These are nice. Just measure these links. 1.42. One, I've got this pack of little rods. Two, four, not big enough. This one looks better. Yeah, okay, this one. Obviously I want it bigger than the chain. Also, we're making a ring, yeah, and then you've got to cut it out so you lose the distance of your, the width of your saw blade. So that reduces the circumference a little bit. So definitely use a very thin saw blade when you're cutting out rings. Otherwise you affect the circular, circularness of them. Uh, so what we're doing, yes, right. Turning this around that. So just basically same rules of making a jump ring. If you haven't made a jump ring before, I'll put a link up on the screen and you can see how I made jump rings in a previous video. Got all the links today. So I'm just doing one, just making sure that's really tight, not tight to the metal and tight to the one next to it. If you come out away from the one you've just turned up, they go a bit, when you cut them out they're like this too much and then when you line them up they're not perfectly round. What I do sometimes as well, get pliers, I'm gently squeezing it but because that's obviously solid it really helps push it against that metal. I'm not squeezing hard, I'm not trying to put a big flat around the outside, but that'll get you nice, nice rings. So there you go, nice thin saw blade in. Just make sure the teeth are going towards you. If you can't quite see on the fine blades, it can be quite difficult if your eyesight's not 100%. Um, you can just touch it with your finger, you can feel it, it's catchy that way. So that's correct. There's a bit of a groove in my peg, so it's sort of holding in there quite well. I push it down quite hard. It's actually a bit painful on my thumb, but it's important I hold it still. And then I've got two little rings there. Only needed one, never mind. This is the best one. Right, now it's really important that join is good, like I always say, really important. And it's got to be perfectly round as well. So do whatever you've got to do, whatever you think works to get that perfectly round squashing it down a little bit. So guess what you can do? Put it on your metal block and give it a gentle tap. It's quite hard, yeah, because you twisted it up. It might even benefit from an anneal. It was not flat at all. All right, there you go. Might be an idea to solder it up now with a tiny bit of hard solder, and then we'll attach it to the pendant with easy solder. And then we're definitely not gonna get a little line. I mean, if your join is good, you shouldn't have a little line showing up anyway. So to attach that to the pendant, I'm just going to hold it. I just want a flat on there, yeah? The more of a flat, the bigger the bigger the surface area touching, the stronger it's going to be on there. That's quite a good flat section on there. So I can file this down quite a lot. And you can even, it doesn't matter how much you file it down, I think the more the better. And you can go all the way up to the hole. You're just making it attach more strong on there. So I would just be careful that you're filing directly down over the join. You don't want the join, like say that's the join, you don't want it sort of filing that way or, or that way. Make sure you're going straight down through it. And then obviously the more you file, the wider that gets. So don't go too wide. Well, that's probably about right what I've just done. Let me just straighten up a little bit. Okay, so that'll do. Okay, if I was working in gold or platinum, I would like to just choose where I want to put it and then hold it in position with tweezers, like that. So that would be easy and I, perhaps I would add a bit of solder, probably on the back and then just flood it across and easy, job's done. 
a uh, bit risky to do that in the silver. Uh, everything's just going to blob and come out of shape and it will fall apart. So what I'm thinking of doing with this one, I'm just going to put solder on that first. I'll just put solder on there right now and then file it flat again and then probably just touch it on there. Just I'll have this set up and I'll just as I get it hot I'll just go boink and hopefully I can do it accurately. It's kind of the only way to achieve this in, in silver because it's easy solder. Can't put pressure on anything under heat because uh, I don't know if you saw my other video. What was I making? I think it was that emerald cut and pear shaped three stone. All went wrong on me because I had stuff under pressure while I was trying to solder it. So I don't want to do that again. Go. So I've got solder on this jump ring across the flat I just filed. I'm going to file it flat again. Nice and accurately, but obviously not totally filing all the solder off as well. That's a bit better. Now when you've got a, a ring on there for the first time, a check is directly over a stone or in between, whatever you chose. Parallel pliers are good to check your accuracy. I can see mine needs sort of pulling back a little bit, just hopefully nothing more than a minor little tweak is what it needs. If you've gone really twisted or wrong, you have to resolder it, but minor little tweaks are okay. Obviously you don't want to be yanking things around a lot as well because then you're making your solder joint a bit weaker, giving it a bit of stress. So I'll put that in the acid and then have a closer look at my join, making sure it's okay. So looking both sides, my solder join, both sides is all flooded round, nice and strong. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is usually preferable to have your hanging ring slightly forward because if it's slightly back when it's on a chain, it hangs, especially when there's stones in it. It so hangs and swings back a little bit, it's no good. So if it's hanging forward, it's more likely to hang straight. Just checked on the chain, mine hangs pretty well, but the chain is a bit catchy in there, so what I'm going to do is put a ball phrase, or I might have a flame bud phrase thing somewhere, maybe this one. Uh, just going to round it off that inner edge a little bit more, just to kind of open it up, and then that should let the chain uh, flow a little bit nicer through there, so it'll run on the chain nicely. It's no good at being all catchy. Just opening up the hole bigger doesn't always work. Sometimes it can make it worse, because you're putting a tool through there, so you've got a flat spot. You want to soften the edge. Sometimes a very minor little adjustment is all it needs. Cuts a bit better. So I just changed to a ball phrase. Not one that's going to go in, but just to take that edge off a little bit. Now let's try the chain on it again. Uh, there you go. And check in how it hangs. Pretty straight, not bad. Okay, so that's good. Especially once that's been polished, I would use bristle brushes to try and get in there, that inner edge. I'd even put string in there to get it all polished out inside. Uh, you really got to go to town, getting things finished really nicely. Which brings me to rubber wheels. You could do a far better job with these than you can with bits of paper wrapped around a needle file. So that's solder join. It's not too messy anyway, but this really makes it perfect. There you go, that's all that needed. I kept seeing a little nick. I got a, I hit the side of the setting edge with a, the rub over setting edge with a ball phrase. I need to work on that, there it is. I'm going to rubber wheel that out. Alrighty, I'm calling that finished, ready for setting, or maybe uh, a polish, polishing out all the setting edges, 
getting the stones in, whoever's going to do that, not me, I'm the mounter, not the setter. Uh, and then it'll come back to you for polishing, so it's alright. So what we got is a gallery wire, a kind of an edge that we put around the side, gives it that nice chunky department there, which sort of matches the top uh, flat there. So it kind of flows nicely as a design, looking at it from the side. Underneath, I think it just looks like a more quality piece, just having that little edge. If that was just flat, without that, it would just be a flat, sort of weird, kind of cheap looking, stamped out piece. But having this little, looking at it from the back, having that kind of depth to it, I think adds, adds to it looking like a nice quality piece. Might be nice uh, to have fancy back holes cut in the back. Uh, squares or whatever. I might do a video soon on doing square back owls. I haven't done any for years. So it'll be sort of fun to try it again, see if I can still do it quite well. I used to get, I used to be quite good at them. Uh, when I did that competition in Canada, I did loads of training for square back owls. So I got quite good at it and then never used that skill ever again. <laughs> Just do round holes. Uh, you've got round, stone, got round stones going in something. Why would you want square back owls? Just have round holes. It's quicker and easier and neater and just more suitable for the design. Uh, anyway, people like a challenge, so some jewelers like doing square back holes all the time. Uh, but yeah, basically, I, quite, I do quite like this. I think if that's set and all cut up nicely, it'll look really good. Um, so what I'll do, I'll balance the stones in position and we can have a look at it and help us envisage it as a finished piece. I mean, that, that looks pretty horrible to me, but if you can imagine all the uh, all the stones are on the outside all cut up nicely and you've got nice lines and nice sort of mirroring sharp little angles in there as all the pave settings done nicely. I'll tell you what I might do, I might give it to Nao-san from my, the one who, the lady, the Japanese lady who taught me setting on that video. I'll put a link up on that video now. This video is full of links to other videos. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll pay her to do that. I can probably set the centre one myself. And then this will be a nice finished pendant and I can put it on my website or something I can offer to people made to order and I promise I'll put a note on there promising to do a good job phrasing it out not like I did on this one okay so I don't know what's wrong with my head today I finished making the pendant and then I just immediately got up, I turned the camera off and just started editing it. I forgot to do like an outro to the video. So here we are, I'm back. The sun is setting, the lighting is getting all dim. Uh, anyway, yeah. Thanks for watching, click like and subscribe and share. Uh, comments, I've noticed a few, uh, the channel seems to have reached some more experienced jewelers on YouTube. So I'm noticing in the comments, a lot of people telling me I'm doing stuff wrong and I'm wasteful and not skillful and stuff like that. But I kind of appreciate that. I like, it's like they give me insight into how other people think and other jewelers, how they make stuff. Because as you progress over years with your own experience and different people teaching you different ways of doing things, you kind of collect your own specific way of making jewelry. All I'm doing on this channel is showing you what I do. Just things I've been taught and little things I've taught sort of I uh, learned myself through my own experience. So that's what this channel's about, just doing, showing you how I do it. And I try to back it up. If I'm telling you how to do something, I try and back it up by showing you me doing it and then going, there you go, that technique worked, here it is. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm about on this channel. But yeah, all comments, negative, positive, whatever, it's all very welcome. I, I really appreciate the channel is kind of growing and more jewelers are, are finding it. Uh, what else? We've got a new patron, a new patron to the channel. Her name is Megan Falconer. Let me double check that. Megan Falconer, thank you very much. I don't know the code to my phone, I can't tell you. Megan Falconer, yes, thank you very much. Really appreciate your patronship to the channel. Uh, yeah, all the patrons, just everyone who's involved is really, really beneficial to helping the channel grow. And let me explain what I did. Uh, the last bit of money I got from patrons, it's like, it's a few, it's like 50 pounds a month I think I'm getting now from patrons, so it's pretty good. Uh, I bought a load of synthetic stones, so... Not moist tonight. These are all like just CZs, synthetic sapphire, that's a bit of glass I think, but it's meant to be a, an emerald. Uh, little tapered cut baguettes, another synthetic sapphire, slightly smaller. Baguette cuts, a little marquee cut, little stone there. 
oval, dreaded oval. And then that one is quite cool. I think that one with the little baguettes either side is going to be a nice ring. So I can make new things with these stones and show you different collets, different techniques, different ways of putting things together. Rings, pendants, earrings, so I've got so much to get on with. Uh, other ways you can support the channel, just clicking like and subscribing. Commenting helps the channel grow with the algorithms of YouTube. Uh, Facebook jewellery specific making groups. You can share my videos in those groups. That's always great for helping more people discover the channel. Uh, also, if you're watching other jewellery making videos on YouTube, you can reply in their comment section, say check out Diamond Mounter, or if you want to see another way of making this or whatever someone else did, you can just uh, just, just mention Diamond Mounter in other, other YouTube jewellery making tutorial videos and that just helps spread the word. So all of that I'm so grateful if you're actively taking your time and, and doing something like that to help the channel grow. It's all very exciting. Uh, yeah, so with that, thanks. Sorry this pen has been a bit strange and I've been a bit stupid while making it. Um, yeah, I'll try and do something better next time. Thanks for watching, bye.